Thank you, Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. The Sunday school kids can be dismissed. Praise the Lord. I want to thank Tammy for working with them. She's got them all excited. They're working on the armor of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's chaotic, but you know, Jesus said, suffer the children to come unto me, and praise the Lord. That's the way it works. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I, I want to thank Tim for opening. As always, great job, Tim. Appreciate it. setting the tone for yeah. Amen for this for what God wants to do. And uh, thank you, Jody and yeah. Suzanne and Tammy for worshiping and yeah. praise the Lord. That's why we have that back there. Praise the Lord. See it. Praise God. Amen. But anyway, thank you all for participating and worshiping the Lord. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to uh, Vern, our visitor. We appreciate you being here, buddy. God bless you and hope that uh, he ministers to you this morning along with all of us. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm not giving up on my time travel jokes. Because I think Peter finally got the last one. Of course, he isn't here today to confirm that. So, But bartender, he says, I'm sorry, we never serve time travelers. A time traveler walks into a bar. Thank you. The Lord. See, it's not that hard. No. Don't think about it. Praise the Lord. The other day I saw this poor old guy uh, fall down and hurt himself. Well, at least I assumed he was poor. He only had $3 in his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know this guy who occasionally uh, sells me a gun or two, and I call him T-Rex. He's a small arms dealer. <laughs> God's in a good mood now. Come on. Let's yeah. Praise the Lord. What do you call the soft tissue between a shark's teeth? A slow swimmer. Yeah. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. On to the real deal here. I want to just recap a little bit from last week because I want to just go a little further with that uh, uh, this week. And for those of you who may not have been here and for those of you who may not have been listening, praise the Lord. Uh, Holiness actually means one, and not the number, but one in the sense of being complete. So holiness denotes the concept of being integrated, and integrated comes from the same word as integrity. So God has integrity because what he says, what he does, and who he is are all the same. Yeah. Amen? And that's exactly what holiness means. No deviation. What you say is who you are is what you do, it's all combined, amen? So God always does what he says because he is one with himself. There's no conflict. See, here's part of the issue that we have. He says, be ye holy, for I am holy. So he's telling us to be one as well, right? The problem is, we got this. And unless we get our minds renewed to the word of God, we're always a little bit out of integrity, a little bit less than complete and whole, right? We have to have the same integrity between what we say and what we believe. Yeah. Amen. That's where this idea of confession. I know there's a whole word of faith movement. I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying that's just part of what being a believer is. It's not, it's not supposed to be another denomination or something. It's just, a, it's just an aspect of, of our life in God, our relationship with the Lord. Holiness is simply telling the truth. God cannot lie. Amen. And so... Holiness is telling the truth. Let's look at this quickly if you uh, can, Suzanne. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Things that you've learned, things that you've received, things that you've heard, and things that you've seen in me, right? Then do that. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. So today we're going to talk about prayer. Real prayer. Now I, I know I don't want to get too flaky. But there's all sorts of communication with God. I mean we just praise the Lord and thank him. Aren't, there are times you know when you just, it just dawns on you what, how good God has been. And what he's doing. And, and how he's blessed you. And you just talk to the Lord. You know just thank you Jesus. Praise God. I'm so grateful for what you're doing in my life. And that's not necessarily prayer. It's communication. But, and, and we should have that. It's part of you know, a relationship. It's part of what you have 
in any relationship. So, uh, but I want to focus in on, on what real prayer is. I don't want to di diminish any of that. We need to praise the Lord. We need to have thanksgiving. And we need to just have informal communication with the Lord. He wants to, us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Not just for stuff that we need, but just to be in His presence. Just to interact, amen, with Him. So let's begin with Genesis chapter 1. And we'll read verses 26 through 28. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Praise the Lord. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 1 Peter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, you remember when God gave man dominion over the earth, he gave us the freedom to legally function as its authority. As he is in heaven, so are we on earth. In other words, he has authority, obviously, over anything and everything, but he has, he has uh, withheld his authority on earth because he's given it to man. So he's, we are to operate on earth the way God operates in heaven. Praise the Lord. And it's through God's word that we can know, believe, and agree in faith with what God's will is. Amen? So without his word... We're left with our opinions, our desires, our feelings, amen, uh, instead of the living and enduring word of God. So God wants to use his power in the world, but for him to do that, we have to understand how to appropriate his word. Because God's not going to just come down here and do this. This is up to us, praise the Lord, amen. So uh, real prayer. Again, thanks, praise the Lord, thanksgiving, uh, you know, just communication with God, that's all great. But real prayer is actually just speaking the word to God exactly as he gave it to yes. us. Amen. Amen. Yes. So there's, there's no difference between what the people in the Bible, the ancient uh, uh, writings, amen, in the Bible, these people were given, amen, the same thing that you and I are given to work with. <coughs> They relied on what God gave every man in all of mankind, his word. Yeah. I love the different scriptures that were used this morning. I, I got every one of them here. Praise the Lord. I'm, I, I, the way they kind of come back to you and echo back what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Our power is the word of God. Yes. And he's already given it to us. Yes. We have all things yes. that pertain to life and godliness. We have the word of God that can produce everything that God has promised. Amen. Our job is to learn how to use it. Amen. How to handle it properly. Amen. Praise God. So we can use God's word correctly only when we understand what it is and how to apply it. Yeah. The first thing to understand is that God himself is speaking in the word because the word and he are one. Right. Again, this integrity, this idea of being whole or complete. Amen. The first thing is that God is speaking in the Word. Amen. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Amen. So God's presence or God's manifestations become alive or become manifest, if you will, when we speak His Word in faith. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Elijah. Talking about, Tim mentioned this. Look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. This is after what Tim was uh, talking about. They had destroyed the prophets of Baal and, and you know, held back the rain and all this. And then uh, Jezebel's chasing him and he runs from this woman and he's scared and he doesn't know what he's supposed to do, right? So he's standing here all with his 
robe wrapped around him and his uh, prayer shawl and so forth. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. This is the Lord speaking to him. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great, now get this first, the Lord spoke. The Lord gave him a word. And the word was, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. So we want to see manifestation. I mean, that's, that, that's, what, that's what we're all about. We want to see the manifestation of God's power. Amen? But the, the problem is, we don't realize that his word is the foundation for that power. Amen. Amen. And that power is only a reflection of the greatness of God himself. So it was God's still small voice, amen, that was behind the forces of nature that Elijah saw. It, God said go. God gave him a word. And then these things came from that word. Amen. Matthew 17, verse 20. You're going to see I'm using all your scriptures this morning, praise the Lord. Matthew 17, 20. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So the power of God's word is so great that even if our faith is just the size of a mustard seed, yeah. amen, we can still move mountains. Yes. Whatever they are. Praise the Lord. All right, so the Word reveals God's nature. And it's His nature that reflects His will. Everything God says is a revelation of His character and His purposes. He and His Word cannot be separated. So the more you see the Word, the more you understand or should understand of God. Amen. That's why God's fulfillment of His Word is a matter of integrity for Him. Because He and His Word are one. If his word isn't true, then he isn't true. Right. Amen? He wants us to be integrated. Amen? Into him. Remember the, all the scriptures that talk about Jesus said, I'm in him, you're in me, we are all one. That's what he's talking about. The word, us, and God are one. Mm -hmm. That's integrity. Amen? And out of that comes all of the promises that God has given us. So the real, the real question actually becomes, will we respond to what the Word reveals about God's character. Do you believe that He's good? Do you believe, amen, that what He says will come to pass? Yeah. Amen. N look at this in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Numbers 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that He should lie. Can I get an amen? Praise God is not a man that He would lie. Amen. That he should repent or have to say, forgive me for lying. Amen. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Obviously, those are rhetorical questions. He's just saying, come on, God can't lie. He doesn't lie. He's not like men. He doesn't lie. And because he doesn't lie, if he says something, is he, isn't he going to do it? Or has he said something? And he's not going to make good what it is he said. Now we know men, we know women, we know that sometimes we have, we really want to do something and we say, I'm going to do this, but for whatever reason, we run short of cash, we got this problem, something comes up or whatever. So we don't always follow through as we should. We, that's what we call integrity, right? If somebody tells me they're going to do something and they don't do it, I don't necessarily critique everything, but the truth is, their integrity is at stake. Your integrity is at stake when you say something and then don't follow up on it, right? Well, this is what we're talking about here with the Lord. So the Word will work in your life only when you believe it. Praise the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. For yourselves, brethren, know how... <coughs> excuse me. For yourselves, brethren... Know our entrance into you, that it was not in vain. 2.13, I think. Oh, sorry. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, 
but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Amen. It's not like this isn't, I'm not reading something a bunch of men wrote. No. I'm reading something that God wrote yes. and they just penned it out. They just, he authored it. They just wrote it down for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so your belief is the evidence that you trust God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why? Because God wants to give you all things. But He can't do it unless you believe for it. So it's not God withholding it. It's a question of us believing for it. Amen? So He isn't impressed with how many scriptures you quote. There's nothing wrong with quoting scriptures, and, and it's good to, to memorize the Bible, and so on and so forth. But God is impressed with, isn't impressed with that. He's moved and convinced when you believe what He told you and when you prove it by acting on it. Belief is just simply trust in action. That's what blesses God. That's what, because He wants us to be blessed. And the only way we can be blessed is to believe Him. Right. Amen. There's power in the Word. Because it's not just information. It's not just knowledge or facts to us. It's life itself. Look at this in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 46 and 47. He said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do, all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing you shall prolong your days in the end, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right. We live and move and have our being yes. in Him, in the Word. Praise the Lord. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit yes. and they are life. Right. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 23 through 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. We come alive, we came alive, we were made alive by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word's alive, it lives forever. Yes. Amen. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, the flower thereof faileth or falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Praise the Lord. Then in Hebrews chapter 4, he talks about we were quickened or made alive, amen, by the yeah. word of God. So the word is alive, and that's how powerful it is. Yes. Amen. What did God use to create the world? The word was with God in the beginning. Amen. Yes. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Yeah. Praise the Lord. No word of God is empty of power. Right. Praise the Lord. Mark 10, verse 27. Jesus looking upon them saith, with men it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55 and 11. So the word comes down, you know. I mean, it's like rain, he says. Yes. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing Whereto I sent it. Let's look at this. So shall my word be. Because just prior to this, he has said, my word is like the rain and the snow that comes down out of heaven. Yeah. What does it do? It waters the ground. Now, he's, this is a metaphor, but he's saying my word is just like seed. And it comes down. And if it can find decent soil, if it can find some good ground, it'll do, it'll do what the seed's supposed to do. It can't do anything right. else. Yeah. It'll produce after its own kind. Oh, Amen. Right. We are... The soil. We are the thing that this that he's trying to get the word to for the seed to grow up and then manifest itself in the fruit or whatever it might be that, that he has promised. Amen. So so shall my word be, he says. Amen. Right. So praise God. The deal is this. If we want the word to work powerfully in our lives, we have to make it in us. We have to be sure yes. that the word is in us. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Look, look uh, John 15, verse 7. Again, we're still talking about this integrity or the uh, us being integral beings or complete or whole beings as God is. He said we were created in his image. When we were born again, we, we, we got that image back. Amen. Yeah. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Amen. So maybe you've tried that and it didn't work. Praise the Lord. Or maybe it's just a, you know, a good sounding scripture that you hear thrown around all the time. But Jesus was given us the key to success. What's the first word in the verse? If. Praise the Lord. We like the it shall be done part. But we often forget the if. There's two conditions. If you abide in me, and if my words abide in you, Amen? So, I guess first of all, we need to ask, what does it mean to abide in Jesus? Well, it means to be born again, obviously. It means to be integrated with him, to be one with him, right? Integrity. Second, what does it mean to have his words abiding or living in you? Praise the Lord. Here's a test for you. This is how you can tell whether or not the word is in you. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you're under pressure? When the crap hits the fan, when the diagnosis comes, the bank statement, amen, the relation, whatever, whatever it might be, anything. What, what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Is it an affirmation of faith? Or is it fear? Yeah. Or confusion? That's good. Frustration? Yeah. Doubt? Right. Anger? Amen? Jesus gave us the condition, yes. if my words abide in you. He doesn't perform your perspective on things. He performs his word. Yes. He isn't performing your take on the situation or the circumstance. Right. He's there to perform his word. word. Amen? Yes. And if you don't bring him his word, you're not going to experience that right. it shall be done for you. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Because yes. he's, look, it's not that he isn't compassionate. We know that Jesus was compassionate. He went about healing all that were sick and casting out demons and so on and so forth. But he can't operate on sympathy. He has to have the word, yes. amen, to give you what it is you want. So you can cry and complain and go on and on about why it hasn't happened up to this point or why this didn't take place or that didn't take place. That's not getting you anywhere with God. No. It may make you feel a little better because you vented, but it's not going to help your situation one bit. God is waiting for yes. His Word to perform yes. it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans 4.17. Let me, let me back up for a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Suzanne. I'm doing to you what I did to Peter last week with Solomon. He's like, Solomon, where is that in the Bible? It's my own little thing. Praise God. If my word, here's what Jesus is saying. If my words abiding in you, then you can ask for what's abiding in you. Remember, he says the kingdom of God is in you. Yeah. And you already have everything yeah. that God has promised. Yeah. Right? If, my, if the word's abiding in you, you've already got it all. It's just a question of whether or not you're going to say it mm -hmm. so that it goes back to him and it can manifest. Yeah. All right? That's the power of the word. All right, look at this now in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Right. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Right. Now, you know, here, I don't want to get too weird with this, but gee, we're talking about the Word here. He is the Word become flesh. Yeah. 
And so he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's really not me that's living, but it's the word that's living in me. And the life, remember, this word is life. It's living. It's what gives life. Amen. Which I now live in the flesh, in this body. I live by the faith of the Son of God, or by the faith that comes from the Word of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. We live by faith, not by sight. Right. So the Word of man is what man is. Right? And the Word of God is what God is. You can't separate them. He, this is God. Yes. Say, so well, I believe God, but I, I don't believe that he's going to heal me. Well, you, then you don't believe God. Right. Amen? Faith is simply taking God at His word. Yep. Yes. So God says, you're not supposed to live by what you see, but by what I told you. Yes. Amen? That means what you know is more important than what you see. That's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Romans 4, 17 now. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom him... Whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now we're talking about Abraham, right? He's, God made him the father of many nations before him whom he believed. It was because he believed that he became the father of many nations. Who quickeneth the dead, or give life, amen, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So if I live by what I see, I'm living in sin. <laughs> I've got to get a hallelujah or praise the Lord or something from that. Thank God for grace because this is a fact. This is where much of the church is. Yeah. Amen. Look at Romans 14, verse 23. He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever, whatever is not of faith is sin. Yes. <coughs> There's a lot of born again sinners. I hear say it all the time. You're either born again or you're a sinner. That Well, that's true in the sense that you're not a sinner, but you can still sin. Right. And every time you're not believing, you're in sin. Yeah. So you better thank God for grace, yes. amen, and his patience to bring us, amen, to a place of faith, to a place of, of confidence, amen, in him. Yeah. Right. You see... God's promises are always in contrast to your problems. His promises are always yep. in contrast to yep. your difficulties or to your situations and circumstances. Amen. God knows what things look like to you. Yep. He came in the flesh. Amen. Jesus experienced all of this. Not that God didn't know it already, but he came and shared in our dilemma here. Amen. And so he knows what things look like to you. He's the, he gives you the promise ahead of the blessing, amen, so that when you get the blessing, you'll know it came from Him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So 1 John chapter 5, uh, verses 13 through 15, Suzanne. John, 1 John 5, 13 through 15. So these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He heareth us, or hears us, yeah. whos whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Yeah. So John says, I'm writing these things so that you can know that you are connected to God. Yeah. And then he says... This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. And what's that confidence? That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yes. Amen. Here's the conditional word, if, again. Yeah. If we ask anything according to his will. God's word is his will. Yes. His word is his desire. Yeah. And his intent is his purpose. Praise the Lord. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yes. He hears himself. Yes, he does. Amen. Who does God hear? Amen. When you speak his word. He hears himself. Yes. 
And let me clue you in on this. When you're saying what God says, the devil hears God too. Yes. He doesn't yes. know your voice. He knows the word. Yes. Amen. And so when we say something to God, God's just hearing an echo. He's just hearing his own voice coming back to him, which, which tells him immediately, not that he needs to be told, that I cannot lie. I said it's got to happen. And the devil knows it too if you believe. Amen. God hears you when he hears the words that he himself has spoken. He doesn't hear just random whining and complaining. He's hearing. He's listening for his word to perform it. He's not listening for complaints. He's not listening for, you know, woe is me. He's listening for his word because that's what he performs. That's what he does. Amen. The reason Jesus' life was so successful was that he didn't speak his own words. You say, yeah, well, he was Jesus. Jesus gave up all of his divine power and authority when he came to this earth and lived as a man. Yes. Totally subject, amen, to all the conditions that we're subject to. Yes. The difference was, he was, when he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he went about doing good, amen? He went about healing the sick, doing all those things, amen? So the deal was with Jesus... The reason he was successful is he didn't say his own words. He spoke God's words. He was a man saying what God said. Yes. Believing it. John 12, uh, verse 49 and 50. That's why I know we can do this. Yes, you, can. you can do it. All yes. things are possible yes. if you can believe. Right. How do we believe? By the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And you, you know, you believe a lot more that comes out of your mouth than some, comes out of somebody else's mouth. Because you know whether you're telling the truth or not. Right. Sometimes it's a little spurious about how others are talking, you know. But you know if you're telling the truth or not, right? Yeah. So for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. This is Jesus speaking. I've not spoken of myself. Or these, these words that I'm saying, they didn't come out of my intellect or out of my uh, being, you know, my, my thoughts. But the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. He gave me a word. What I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. We already know his word is alive. Amen. It brings life. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So what he said, what, I, what his word is, is the only thing I'm saying. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. John 14, verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Integrity. Amen. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Wow. Verse uh, 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. I don't know how it can be any clearer than that. This is the key. Jesus didn't invent words. He was always saying to God what God had already said to him. He said to God what God said first. Why? Because God watches over his word to fulfill it or to perform it. The works of Jesus were the Father's works because his words were the Father's words. Praise the Lord. That's good. And the thing that we need to grasp in all of this is that we have the same capacity. We just have to set a watch over yes, our tongue. Right. We say a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with the Word of God. It has to do with our circumstance or our situation or something that we're experiencing or going through. And, and that doesn't get you anything. The only thing that's going to deliver you or provide for you the promise of God is that promise. Yes. Yes. From your lips. Yes. Amen? Hebrews 11 uh, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Tammy's going to be upset with me because I'm going to be done early. 
Those of you with children, you may be waiting for a while. <laughs> the rest of you, get to the buffet. <laughs> Praise God. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. The elders obtained a good report. These elders, these people of the Bible, were not super saints. If you've read anything about them, you know they were screw-ups. Amen? They had their problems. They had their issues. They were people just like us. They received answers to prayer because they put their faith in what God had said. Not because they were special. Not because they were perfect. Not because they weren't flawed. But because they believed yes. God. Yes. And they trusted in his character and in his word. Acts chapter 10, uh, verse 34. It's basically he's just saying that God is not a respecter of persons. In other words, he doesn't measure you against me. Right. Only thing he's going by is the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yes. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Yes. I mentioned this before, but the truth is... Everything flows from that. That's how you get into the kingdom, and that's how you operate once you're in the kingdom. You believe, and you confess. Amen? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So whatever he did for those people, he'll do for you. Praise the Lord. Because he's not doing a new thing. Amen? It's just finding somebody that will say what he said, that will believe it and act on it. Amen? Amen? He won't treat us any differently than the believers in the ancient times. Except that now we have an additional advantage. We have the atonement. Now let me just throw this out there. Remember we were talking about integrity. What is atonement? At one meant. It's being one. Now we, because we have been atoned, we have been, we have been made one with God. Right? Yes. We have been integrated. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so that's what the, the advantage that we have is that. And of course the prayers of Christ. Amen. And our on our behalf, and as well as the intercession of the Holy Spirit, which we now have. Yes. Right. He makes utterances for us. Amen. Right? When we pray in tongues, the Spirit is praying through us, yes. even with groanings that we can't utter yes. because we don't really know how to get this thing out or how to yes. confess it or do it right. But so we speak in the Spirit. And one of the reasons we're praying in the Spirit is so you don't screw it up with your own words. Right. Your own anxiety, your own fears, your own doubts, your own questions. Amen? Amen? See, those people struggled with doubts. Amen? They were, they were inclined to mistakes. Amen? Failures. And they had to learn by experience. But we also see the faithfulness and the love of God as He teaches them how to obtain the blessings and the promises of God. Amen? Romans 8, uh, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who is his son? The word made flesh. So he spared not his own son. It's the word that, that brought us to Christ. Amen? And who is the word? Amen. But he delivered him up, amen, for us. And so by that word, he will also freely yes. give us all things. He gave us salvation through the word. Yes. And by that same word, he'll give you everything, amen, that he has ever promised. Yes. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. He makes us one. Yes. Complete. Integrated. In Him. Now before I close, I'm, I'm trying to slow down here because I know Tammy's probably got all kinds of stuff going still. But just imagine this. We're talking about integration. What do you suppose the last thought is? What's the last thing that goes through a bug's head before he hits your windshield at 70 miles an hour? Because I've got him all over my windshield. His rear end. That's integrated, buddy. I'm telling you. That's, you know, the last thing through his head. If you don't believe me, go out and check yeah. my windshield because there's stuff all over and it's not all. Whatever. 
was, praise the Lord. Are you still with me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's a little spiritual. I know I go a little deep sometimes, but praise God. All right, look at this. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This will be the last scripture. Be not conformed to this world, which is what? No integrity. They're still dead. They're still dead in their trespasses and sins. They're not integrated into Christ. They're not one with God. They don't have the access to these things. Amen? Be not conformed to that, to the natural stuff, to the normal way of responding to situations and circumstances and, and crisis and so forth. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? That's the thing that's causing us to be, to lack integrity. That keeps us from being whole or complete, as God declares us to be. You, know, you see what I'm telling you? So be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. This. You can't do it, amen, if you're, not, if you're still conformed to the world. Even though you're saved from the world or the consequences that the world will face, even though you're saved from that, you don't get the benefit, amen, of being in Christ. You don't get the benefit of the integrity of God unless you get your brain to work in so that when the first problem arises, I don't just let the first thing that comes into my head come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Be slow to speak, quick to hear, yes. quick to see the word, but slow to say stuff. Yes. Because our instinct is to, all right, just if you don't believe me on your way home, let somebody pull right out in front of you doing 50 miles an hour and see what the first word is that comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> According to his will. <laughs> we know he hears us. If we're saying what he said. Whatever we ask, we know we have what we ask of him. That's integrity, church. Yes. Amen. And that's real prayer. Yes. And that's what real prayer is. It's saying what he said. Right back to him. Yes. Amen? Amen. You, you can say, well, I, but I, I say it, but sometimes I don't believe it. Keep saying it. Yeah. Keep saying it until you do believe it. If you don't believe it yet, say it until you do. I mean, I tell you what, I prayed the sinner's prayer plenty of times in my life. Amen? And I suspect I was saved the first time I prayed it, although I never felt like it because I was still running around doing all the crazy stuff I'd ever done. Until I got to a place where I just couldn't go forward. I couldn't go any further. And I just said, Lord, if you don't make yourself real to me somehow, I'm done. I'm not I don't want to go through any more of this again. I don't want any more broken relationships. I don't want any more of the mess that I've created by the lousy choices I've made. And from that moment on, I, it wasn't like zzz, I heard a voice from God that said, okay, Nate, here we go, buddy. You and me. No, but things just started happening. Yes. And we were going to, we, we, we moved over to, from Houston to Beaumont, from Beaumont into this little town called Viner. And, and uh, we were going to, we were trying to get our stuff together. And uh, so we were, we, we, we were going to rent this house right next door to the Baptist church. I'm going to tell the truth, Sally. Because we thought, and I'm, this is nothing against Baptists. I just, as a kid growing up, we thought they were, this, these are religious people. Because we went to a, Disciples of Christ Church, and we basically got the Sunday morning paper. The Register and Tribune preached to us every Sunday morning, which was pretty good, except he never gave us the comic strips. Just <laughs> great guy. He was a theology professor at Drake, intelligent, but just didn't really have a really deep relationship with the Lord. So we, when I'd see Baptists, because I went to school with a few of them that went to the Baptist Church, and they were, I mean, they were religious. <laughs> they would correct you if you got out of line, you know. So I thought, well, that's it. We'll just we'll, we'll rent a house right next to the Baptist church. We get up, go right to church. We don't have to, you know, go through a lot of stuff. The only problem was they were tearing up all of the plumbing and all the uh, <coughs> pipes that were running in and out of that church. So we couldn't move there into this house because it was in in the middle of all this mess. And so we had to find another place because I told Sally I'm not driving back and forth from Houston to Beaumont because that's where the company offices were that I changed jobs and. Uh, uh, anymore. I, we're moving. So we just drove across town and rented another house on the other side of town only to find out that it was just up the street from a Pentecostal church. Not that that was the answer to everything, 
But the idea of the Holy Spirit and all these things that I'd never learned about as a kid, and you know, Christ, God, you know, Christ in the flesh, and all of all of the truths that we had learned, baptism and everything else, all that came from there. Now, did, did, was all of it true? No. But I didn't know that, and I didn't need to know that then. I just needed to know that God was real and that he had accepted me and my mess. Yeah. And that's what God did. In fact, the reason we found the, this, it was a brand new church. I mean, it was a big uh, church that they were, had just built. Didn't even have a sign out yet to know what it was. It was just a really cool looking church, you know, really big. And we found it trying to buy a pack of cigarettes because we didn't know the town. So we were looking to buy a package of Marlboro Lights, I think it was at the time. <laughs> And uh, so we were just looking for a quick trip or some little store, you know. And here's this big church. Sally came back and said, hey, there's a great big church right around the corner here. We can go there. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. And God yeah. just opened up all sorts of realities that we had no clue yeah. were going to be true or real. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying God has integrity. Yes. And if you'll trust him in his word, he said, I, you come to me, I will not turn you away. Amen? You bring your issues to God yes. and not to everybody else. And then when you come to him with your issues, say to him yes. what he has said to you. Yes. And it shall come to yes. pass. And you'll find that nothing shall be impossible to you. Why? Because nothing's impossible to God. And if you're Amen. saying what God said, you're putting it back in his hands. Yes. You're, you're giving it to him instead of you trying to deal with it. Amen? Amen? As you can say to that mountain, be thou removed. Yes. And it will be plucked up and cast into the sea. Yes. This is the power that God has shared with us and given to us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Just go in the integrity, yeah. amen, of who you are in Christ. And don't let anybody talk you out of it. You say what he said, and you'll get what he promised. Amen. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands with our visitor. Amen. Tom, we're glad that he was here to visit and be with us. Amen. And God bless all of you. Have a great week. Amen.